Today, we're going to be talking about this article up here. It is titled, I'm a retiree. Four things I wish I had known about 401ks in my earlier years. Now, this article is as if they've been watching our channel and they just threw everything on here from what we've already said, because we've talked about all these things. Um, just to go over the four uh, segments of, you know, four things that they wish they knew. Keep an eye on your investments. Watch out for fees. The power of early contributions and the cost of lifestyle creep. Now, you guys can go ahead and read more on this if you want. We'll leave the article down below. Um, but yeah, these are things that we always have. We mentioned this plenty of times <laughs> in our videos, not just one video, but plenty of times. We could just start with keep an eye on your investments. Um, this one is, you know, this is one that we've talked about as far as you got to know what you are investing in. You know, a, a lot of people don't realize companies just put you into a target retirement fund. Um, so keeping an yeah. eye on investments, knowing what you're investing in is going to be a big um, mover in your 401k. Uh, but Kirby, I'll let you uh, go on if you want to start with the second one or whatever thoughts you have. Well, I'm, I'm going to piggyback right off what you said, target retirement. I mean, so for people that don't know, I'm going to piggyback right off of what you said. The target retirement account, for people that don't know, it's heavy in equities. And then when you get closer to retirement, it divulge or it slides more into bonds as an income mechanism. This is the problem. The highest growth factor is equities. The highest growth factor, which is going to take your the money contribute to the 401k to a higher level is equities. It's not bonds. Bonds is more of a dividend play, more of an income play. The problem with target retirement funds, besides the fees, and we'll get to that in a minute, is the factory is they're trying to time the market. So let's, again, play devil's advocate here. Let's just say your target retirement is 2030. So in the last four years, so 2030 is in six years. So the closer you get to retirement age, the more they put your, they put you into bonds so you don't get much growth because you're going to get dividends from bonds. So let's say your, your retirement is 2030. So you didn't miss all the growth from 2020 until now because you've been sitting in bonds. That's what happens. They're trying to time the market on when you're going to retire saying, oh, we'll just put most of your money. We don't know what catastrophic is going to happen in between time between now and the retirement date. So with somebody moving and adjusting your money here, here and there, that's a major problem when nobody knows what the future holds. Alex, am I making sense or am I talking crazy? No, you mean crazy. Okay. So that's that's the that's a big avenue of it. I say you play the growth factor until it's over. The growth factor historically has been the S P five hundred or equities, but me, I'm only a proponent of S P five hundred. So you play the growth. Yes, it's going to be ebb and flows. Yeah, the swings will be a little bit wider than normal, but most people don't pay attention to them anyway. But the the actual fact of people not understanding, keeping an eye on your investment, not understanding what they're invested in is a major component of that. Most people that's invest, invested in target retirement accounts, which 85% of the people are in the United States, they don't know to this day what they invested in. They just know they invested in funds of a fund of a fund, but they don't know what the holdings of those funds are. They're just invested in those funds. That is the key. If you don't know what you're invested in, you're in the wrong investment. But Alex, I'll let you roll with it from there. Yeah, so the second one is watch out for fees. And this is especially crucial. So I don't know about other 401k platforms, but I know at least for mine, if you go to the activity section in your 401k, it'll show you all your contributions, all your dividends and your fees. And there you can see how much you are paying in fees. And 
you want to be paying attention to mutual funds. Uh, we actually went over this in a different video on mutual funds that have a low uh, fee charge, you know, something of like 0.02%. Um, a, a few that we went over, we noticed that there were some that were like 0.5% and, you know, higher fees. And so these fees will really just eat into your growth. So you really need to be paying attention to your expenses and your own investments. Kirby, what do you got on that one? Yeah, the fees, Alex, you, you, you hit it the nail on the head. The fees are the most important. Most people most people think they invest and they're doing big things when they uh in a 401k account. But they don't, for the most part, all the money that they contribute is getting eat up, eaten up by fees or the amount of money that their employer is matching is being eaten up by fees. Right. So they don't even they don't even get the benefits of it. I mean, I talk to many people when it comes to 401k. I I mean, literally me, a lot of people. I was about to say millions, but I'd be lying if I said millions. I talk to many people when it comes to 401ks and they and I explain it. It's the same thing every time. It's you need to look out for the fees. Uh I had I had somebody reach out to me the other day and they said that they've been invested in what their employer set them up in for the past four years. And then they reached out to me a couple months ago and then and then I said, hey, if you change X, Y, and Z and just go into the index, you will be better off. Then they called me the other day and they said, hey, they just called and said thank you because the amount... The amount of money that the 401k grew in the last three months is more than it grew in the last four years investing in what the employer put them in. That's what happens. So, but most of it, it comes from the fees. The employer puts you in target retirement accounts and it's fee heavy, fee heavy, fee heavy. That's why you never see any fruits of your labor. Only thing you have to do is find a fund that the expense ratio and the fees are highly low, which I will say it again for the masses. This is the cheat code is to find a mutual fund that in your 401k that is closely indexed to the S&P 500. And if you want to be on the frisky side, go with the NASDAQ 100. I'm a proponent of both of them, but the fees are what's killing them left and right. Again, so he made more money or relatively the same money in three months that he made in the last four years investing in this in the uh 401k just by a quick twerk of where the funds was going to fees was a major component of that the third one is the power of early contributions this one is um what is it like albert einstein says is it the, the sixth wonder of the world or the eighth, eighth wonder of the world eighth compound wonder. interest yeah compound interest there really is a huge difference if you guys go into a compound interest calculator you can test this out you can see um, with different contributions at different ages um, you can see the huge difference if you start from say 21 which is a very early age and you plan on retiring at 60 and then the difference that it makes if you start at 18 just a three-year difference how much money you can actually make extra on your retirement plan um so the earlier that you start the better kirby's son started as soon as he came out the womb he's gonna be a billionaire by the time he gets retirement so well, uh, hopefully he gonna need every dime he the boy can't save a dollar he gonna need every dime. <laughs> so i mean um this is a i think i would argue this is probably out of these four um well i would say this one combined with the first one the biggest contributors to the growth of your 401k but Kirby, what do you have on this one yeah i i agree with you and a couple points that you made that i gotta just hit on right quick when you said i first talked about my kid he gonna need every dollar he can he he Boy, we, we got a long ways to go. He He's not Alex. I'll tell you that. Let's just go with that. He is not Alex. Uh, but 
investing early. So I looked at it, I always looked at this chart and this has been the same chart for, uh, I mean, the bank, the same adage, the same thing people say, if you invest early, if you start at 20, 20 years old, and then by the time you reach 65, you'll be a millionaire. This, this has been, this chart has been out since I was a kid. This ideal or this concept been out since I was a kid. So I always thought like, okay, 21, but all right. So I have a kid, the kids with me for 18 years at least. So I can get them a head start if they, when they born, I open them up a brokerage account, custodial account, of course, and, and uh, the, you know, their names on the account. And then I'm the custodian of the account and then start investing for them at birth. That number compounds way a lot faster and they don't have to wait to 65. If we just using the same numbers, they can get the same, the same impact at 45. And then anything over 45 is just icing on the cake. But it's still that 40 year, 45 year gap from birth to 45 instead of waiting from 20 just to give them a head start. I mean, I don't care if it's $50, you know, $25 a month, whatever that works there. But yeah, early contributions. I love the, the ideal concept. I wish more people would invest at an earlier age. Me, I didn't start till I was 28. Alex, he started probably like when he was like five or six, but it's only like two Alex's in the world and the rest of us is not one of them. So the thing I say about investing early is once you see this video, you have no excuse. If you get any information about investing, you have no excuse. Just start. You don't have to go out there thinking you need to invest thousands and hundreds of thousands. I don't give a damn if it's a Robin Hood account and you put in 500, I mean, $5 in every two weeks to start compounding money into investments because it will exponentially benefit you in the future. When you get old and crepit and rusty like me, you start getting fat like me, don't want to do no, any work. You know, my mom got me outside right now doing some uh, outside labor. I ain't about that life, people. So I need that retirement account to tell mom, I ain't doing this. I'm out of here. I'll hire somebody else for you to help you out because I can't do it. But if you don't have the money to do it, you out there in the sun. You out there in the sun, slaving away, and it's it's pretty bad. And I I don't want that for you. But but on all honesty, once you hear this video, once you see it, you don't have no excuse. The earlier you do it, it the younger you do it, the less you have to contribute. But for anybody that's listening. Just start contributing. I don't give a care what it is. You'll be better off in the future than you are now. The last one on this list is the cost of lifestyle creep. And this one can't be stressed enough. Um, we've also spoken very much on this topic. And uh, just to hit on the first paragraph, um, you know, it says, in order to save, you have to live below your means. It's an obvious concept. If you spend everything you earn, there's nothing left to save. Your means will probably increase over time, though. Bonuses, promotions, and raises will increase your spending power. So this is common with people because of lifestyle inflation, which is mentioned in the second paragraph. But lifestyle inflation is a huge detriment to people's growth and a huge detriment to people's concept of reality in retirement because they think that they can retire on their 401k maybe they look at their 401k they're 60 65 they see a half a million dollar balance and they think that's a lot of money and that's going to sustain them but their lifestyle is 100 150 thousand dollars a year and how long is that going to last them two three years you know and so then they have to go back to work if they're just going to plan on living off of their um, 401k so lifestyle inflation is huge i know kirby you've talked about it plenty of times especially saying you haven't increased uh you haven't added a monthly expense in forgot how many years you mentioned um and you guys live on roughly 2500 dollars a month if you can keep your expenses low all the income past that is bonus and it's to say in the sense that if there is a time in which, let's say, Kirby stops working at his W-2 job, that income that he'll be missing 
isn't going to be detriment to his family situation. It's not going to put him in a spot where he needs to find extra income because he has the assets and cash flow from other investments to sustain the lifestyle that he has a low budget lifestyle. He doesn't need that much money to live on. So if you can nail that down, keep your expenses low, your necessities low, you know, obviously Kirby spends about 20 grand a month on food. So necessities, <laughs> necessities, you know, if you keep necessities low, all the extra fun stuff is just, that's just leisure stuff that you decide however much you want to spend on. And just, I mean, I'm just saying the record straight for the trolls out there. Alex said that I live on $2,500. My my necessities is $2,500 a, a month. My necessities is $2,500 a month. I mean, as he just alluded to, my you food bill is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> my food bill is, is uh, very exquisite. Uh, but, but yeah, but... I, I never wanted my necessities to, and I'm always, I'm always auditing my necessities. I'm always trying to find a, a cheaper way to do the necessities. I mean, I don't care if it's switching internet providers. I don't care if it's cutting on this service and cutting off that service. Because, and this is the reason why. The reason why is I'm always prepared for catastrophic events. And I know people could be like, oh, he's a doomsday guy. I'm not, I'm not that. I'm not, I don't have a bunker in my backyard and I'm storing meals. But what I mean, a catastrophic event is if we get a financial crisis 08 that we had in 08, you know, 2.0 situation, I want to know what is, what do I need to survive? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I need to know that bare bones number because every penny else out there, I'm going to be trying to take over. Uh, assets everywhere else so I'm always conscious of that number and trying to keep that number low as possible I mean of course we have factors in it you know paying off you know paying off uh, assets not having any liabilities not having car payments not having house payments not having all this other stuff that mass majority of the people have that's how we keep our uh, our necessities low because I want to use every piece of asset every all the capital that I have to Go capitalize to make more money. Uh, lifestyle creep is a real thing. The more you work, the more you believe that you deserve. The more you believe that you deserve, the more you go into debt because you believe that you deserve it. This is the funny thing. People believe that they deserve more than they really deserve. People believe because they work 40 hours a week that they deserve the Bergen bag. They deserve uh, NFL league pass, work hard, play hard. But you don't deserve nothing. Getting a job is a little bit above the bare minimum that you can do. I'm not saying it as somebody that's sitting here acting like I'm some YouTube star and I don't have a job. I have those. But a job is the only thing, let's be honest. If you show up to the, the job and you do the bare minimum at the job, you're still going to get the paycheck. So why do you believe you deserve exponentially more? Just because if you choose to work more and all that, that's that's great. But you don't deserve more. What you deserve is to take care of your necessities. All the extra should be taking care of doing what you need to do. And this is something that I always see. The people that work the hardest believe that they deserve the most. And then they spend the most. And then they have nothing to do what they need to do with. I see it all the time. Everybody I see that's hardworking individuals they always have all the bells and whistles and all the, the gadgets but when it comes something important like a deductible to pay your medical insurance they ain't got it because they believe that their wants is bigger than they need so lifestyle creep is a real thing so i hope people understand that is the thing that's going to hurt you from retirement more than anything so that means said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Leave us a comment down below what you thought on this topic. Uh, don't forget to share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.